So I'm out here at ETTS range in Waxahachie, Texas. Uh, this is my home range. This is where we come to get a lot of our practice in. But I figured I'd bring you guys along for a training day just so you can kind of see what my training days look like uh, as I do some of these match preps. And it typically always starts with confirming zero. So I usually go out to the zero range, confirm zero, uh, just to see if it, if it shifted. If you saw the match video or the match prep video, you saw where um, we, we had a zero shift. And that's part of the reason that we do it is just to keep track of those things. Um, sometimes there's random anomalies like that. And we just, you know, if your zero is off and you go in to go shoot, and let's say you're off by 0.3 mils left or right, you're going to have a bad day, right? Because you're going to be misreading wind all day. You're thinking it's more or less than it is. And it's just going to cause issues for you in the long run. So I always check zero just to see. Um, I also, I don't really necessarily shoot for groups. Um, I, I do want to see what the groups are doing. If there's like some, something weird where it's like, I'm, I can't shoot an MOA, then we kind of diagnose that and figure out what's going on. But once I do that, once I've got my zero and I know my zero is good, uh, I do zero out my stops again. So I'm doing that right now. And then I'll come out to the long range and I'll confirm my data. The main thing that I'm looking at is that, um, that one, my Kestrel is still tracking with my data in my gun. And then two, I'm looking to see if my velocity is starting to fall off or if it's starting to speed up. So as we go out and check data, um, there will be times, like so last time Taylor and I were out, we found out our data was actually, we had to recalibrate our velocity. And so our velocity had changed a little bit. I don't remember if it sped up or it slowed down, but um, we did have to adjust that. So that got our data on before the match, which helped a ton, but that's why we check it. That's why we come out and constantly do this. So once I finish zero and data collection and I make sure all that's good, I move on to whatever I'm focused on for that day. So every time I come out, there's something different. It could be positional work. It could be uh, reading wind. It, it could be follow-up shots. It could be whatever, right? And so like I have something scheduled out to focus on whatever that skill, that thing that I'm trying to improve on. And so like, we'll, we'll move on to that, but I, I gotta get my data here just to make sure that I'm tracking and then uh, move over and start working on what I have for the rest of the day. So you guys can see that. Now that we have all of our data collection done, uh, I'm out at one of the bays and we're gonna do some positional work. So for me, the biggest thing today, the overarching theme of what I'm working on, all the specific little goals that I have and what I'm working on today, kind of the, the big picture is having a sense of urgency in my movement from position to position. A lot of the questions that I get from guys are, well, you know, I don't have a range that shoots out to, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand yards. You know, the, the furthest our range has is a hundred yards, maybe even closer than that. So how do I practice long range without having a range like that. So if you if you don't have a place you can drive to, I'd say if you have a place you can drive to, make that happen, right? Um, it's, it's one of the sacrifices you're gonna have to make if you want to improve this skill. So in the meantime, maybe you can only get out there once a month or once a quarter to that range because it's so far. Um, so you plan on doing that, so what do you do in the meantime? So if you can find a range that has 100 yards, 75 to 100 yards, this is how I practice it and how I would recommend you guys doing it. So I've got an Ipsic and I've got two little this is a three by five index card that I ripped in half. So I've got two squares here and these are gonna represent my two targets. So what I'm gonna do is work different positions like I would in a stage and I'll have my two targets. I typically do this with some cheaper range ammo. It can be 55 grain, it can be whatever, whatever you've got um, just to get some practice in. So what I typically do is I'll go check how it prints at 100 yards on, on our zero range. I'll go out there, you know, it may only be a two MOA uh, batch of ammo or a three MOA batch of ammo. That's one part of it. Two, sometimes the ammo will be a little bit hotter or a little bit slower. So you may be like an inch or two high, inch or two low. So you're gonna have to hold for that. I don't adjust my zero for the ammo. I just hold like I would in a map. That's how I'm gonna practice it today. I'm gonna get in some stages. I will show you guys. And again, keep in mind, the main thing that I'm focusing on is urgency of movement from position to position. Cause that's where I was kind of lackadaisical, if you will. So the big issue was for me at the last match was uh, after talking with Joe, after TAC games, he said that I was a little bit rushed. I was a little bit impatient on targets. So in my mind, I was going into QP thinking, be more patient, get your, get your hits, don't have any misses, try to run the stages as clean as possible. And there's a balance to that, right? So you can do that, but if everything else is very slow, you're going to be slow overall. And I was. So how do I balance being patient on target, but having a sense of urgency between targets. That's what I'm focused on today. So I've got a, a barrel over there. Here, I'll just show you guys. So what I've got, what I'm working with today is I've got a, a barrel here. We're gonna work off the end of that. I've got the ladder so I can work different positions. Tripod, I don't clip into the tripod, I throw a bag on it, you'll see it. Off the top of the barrel and then off of the rifle rack. I will say, the one thing that you will not get out of this is calling wind. That is something that you have to spend time and time just behind glass looking, seeing what the Mirage is doing, 
being able to put a value to what that wind is, whether it's using your Kestrel or just off a of feel, using wind flags, whatever it is, being able to tell what the wind is doing at the gun versus at the target. Um, there, there's a lot of that goes into that. There's an art that goes into that, and it's probably the hardest part of long range. The only way you're going to learn that is shooting at distance. In the meantime, if you're only working, you know, at a at 100 yards, this is a great way to work positional work, still get semi-good precision, um, you know, three inches. It's essentially like a three MOA target at 100 yards. So um, let's, let's see exactly what that, that distance is. I don't think it's quite 100 yards. I want to say it's like 80. So. Vortex 4000 with the uh, Geo Ballistics. This thing has been rock solid for us. Yeah, 82.9, so I was close. 82.9, so we're not quite 100, but again, this is a great way if you have a range that only goes out to 100 max, this is a great way to get some practice in. Um, if I really wanted to get 100, I could back up, move the truck back the other side, but this will work for what I'm working on today. All right, so first stage is gonna be top of the ladder, top of the tripod, top of the rifle rack, two shots from each, so one shot each square. Um, I'm gonna turn on the trigger cam and let you guys see both me moving from position to position, but also what it looks like through my scope so you guys get an idea of what this, this kind of practice looks like. Time was 28, 29, gonna go down, check hits, run that again. There was a couple of fumbles in there that I think I can clean up. Um, I think probably for six shots, I can probably run that in 2022. 20, um, yeah, got a little bit to improve upon on that one. Um, it's a pretty straightforward because you're not going in or out of anything. It's just getting on that tripod. That's why I like to use that, throwing the bag on there like that because there's sometimes you get on like the point of a rock or Something that's just not, the bag doesn't want to sit quite on like that. So um, that's why I put that on there. So we'll see, see how that goes. We threw one here. Yep, threw one there and threw one here. So we will run that again. Try to run it clean and try to run it faster. That felt a lot better as far as I was patient on target, fast in between, still had a bit of a fumble on the tripod and a bit of a fumble on the rifle rack, which cost me a couple seconds, but I was more patient on target. Um, the, first, the first go around was not patient on target, so kind of rushed that, but um, let's see if, if those all felt good trigger presses. I would be surprised if any of them were out. So let's go see what the target looks like. That was our miss from earlier. The rest are all in and that was our miss from earlier. The rest are all in. Did have a bit of a cutter, but it still would have caught the steel. So um, much better. Ran it clean and ran it faster. Uh, we'll move on and do another one. Actually, you know what? I've got enough in the mag for there. I'll do one more go to see if we can pick it up and keep it clean. Twenty-four thirty-three had a couple of rush shots in there, a couple that the dot was just moving a little bit, maybe being a little bit rushed there. Probably could have held on for a half a second more, but it was faster. I just don't know if it's clean. All right, so I thought we might have got away with it, but we did have one out here, and we did get away with it here. We got a line cutter down here, so not terrible. Um, probably should have held on just a little bit there. Um, that was the one I was actually worried about, so we'll see. Um, we would set up another stage, try to be a little bit more patient on target, be a little more urgent between them. For this stage, we're going to go barrel, the first rung on the ladder, and then barrel. So this one rolls a little bit. It's going to be awkward using, you have to decide, you're going to use bipod, you're going to use a bag. Uh, here, 
We're obviously going to have to use a bag, but just determine which one because I'm going to have the bipod on there. And then up here, again, uh, bipod or bag, how are you going to do it? How are you going to swing it? So uh, a little bit of thinking going on in this one. So let's see what we can do. That was not fun. That's why I practice this because you get stages like that and you have to do weird stuff and figure out what works better. So there may be a better way to approach that. Um, yeah, we'll try and see what we can do in the next one. So we did have the one called flyer. That was the one I knew was off. Everything else was good. So not bad as far as accuracy goes. Um, urgency between was good. A little impatient on targets. Um, just didn't think I had a good plan for that, which is funny because you make up the stage and then you got a plan for it. Then it's like I had the worst plan possible. So we'll try it again. We'll try something different. See if I can do it better. Thirty-four oh five. So yes, much faster than the first go round. Um, still slow. I really want to be in the twenties on that, but uh, didn't grab the bipod right. It cost me a couple seconds there. Um, trying to get that wobble zone. I mean, off that barrel that moves. It's a little tricky, but it's one of the ones you got to be patient, right? So sometimes you get in a match on a swinger that rocks, um, just an unstable platform, and you just got to do with what what you can do. So I'm gonna try that one again. See if I can clean it up. I think it was clean. There might have been one in there that I think might have been a little off. I think it was a little rushed, but we'll see. Okay, so I actually had, um, actually had, that's cutting the paper, but I'm going to say that's a miss. So cutting the paper, I'm going to say it's a miss. And then we definitely shanked one here. So two misses there. Um, unfortunately, faster, but two misses. So let's see if I can improve that. I think, I'm sure I can. I just, that first target is giving me fits because it rolls and it squishes. Pretty sure I ran that clean. Trigger presses felt much better. If I missed, they're just off. Uh, positions felt way more stable. I could have gone a little bit faster, but I was trying to be a little more patient. I was a little slow in between targets there. Um, so probably pick up maybe three seconds. I can maybe get down in the 20s if I tried. But all in all, if I ran it clean and I got faster, then goal achieved. We got one out here. Um, I'm okay with that. I, I just, maybe I was aiming low, but I felt good about everything else. So if that was a match, you know, makeup shot, I'd be okay with that. Uh, clean here, so much better. Um, overall, even though I still had a miss there, the stage itself, the positions, trigger press, all felt better. Um, probably need to watch camera footage again. I'll go back and watch that and figure out why I missed that one low. I'm betting it was just, it was probably off this barrel, probably just rocking back and forth. So it is what it is. All right, so since I'm uh, trying to limit myself to six rounds per run, we're going to do the... A variation of the bruiser ladder standard so we'll go uh top standing and then we'll go down to a low kneeling and then for me it's going to be seated so uh, we'll actually start at the bottom go to kneeling and then go to standing just to work all three of those and see what we can do
might have missed that one. Twenty-five, thirty-six. I think I can get this one down to the low 20s. Uh, wobble zone was a little all over the place, especially at that kneeling. I just came in a little bit too low in the kneeling. Uh, I needed to be just a tad higher, so I had to kind of readjust. It cost me some time, so. All the ones out are from earlier, and I believe these were from earlier, so. All in, if not, uh, we'll run it again, see if we can get it clean, get it faster. Twenty-seven fifteen. All right, I'm getting slower. I think the heat's getting to me. I'm gonna call it a day. So on each one of those, I got slower. I don't know how I did on that second one as far as hits go. I think it was clean, but I can definitely feel the heat getting to me. So I think it's time to call it a day. Review the footage. See what I need to work on before the next match. Come out and improve on that. All right, so we got a new miss and a new miss. So did not run those clean. Um, it was getting worse, so calling it a day. I think the heat's definitely getting to me. Uh, so I'm going to pack all this stuff up and uh, get on the way home. That is it for me for today. Um, I am smoked, so make sure you always bring water to the range. Don't be like me who has a fridge and there's no water in it. Um, hopefully that helps some of you guys who've been asking about shooting long range. Keep a uh, an actual goal in mind of what it is you're trying to achieve and focus on that thing. You may notice some other things, you may be upset that it's not grouping so well, or you know, you'll find out other things you need to work on, like maybe your trigger press or you know, moving in and out of barricades, whatever, you know, whatever you're working on that day, you may find other things you need to work on. So when you come out, make sure you keep your goal in mind and don't get sidetracked by all these things, otherwise you're gonna chase the rabbit and constantly be looking for the next thing instead of focusing on that one thing you were you were working on. Get as much work done as you can at these short ranges. And then for those of you who don't have a long range to shoot at, find a long range. If it's an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, six hours maybe, you know, make a weekend out of it. Um, but if this is a skill you want to develop, you're going to have to shoot at distance. It's the only way you're going to get better at that. Um, as far as reading wind and understanding what the gun is doing and um, external ballistics and, and, and what's happening there. So um, yeah, hopefully this helps some of y'all. Uh, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, try to chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. Did I not push record on this thing? I'm gonna be so mad if I didn't. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's try it one more again. One more again. I'm gonna get some water burger.